Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this tutorial today, I'm going to be showing you two different ways that you can create that swirl effect in your jessamite pieces or acrylic resin pieces. The two techniques I'm going to show you today can not only work in jessamite but any other acrylic resin substitute. So if you've not worked with jessamite or you don't know a lot about jessamite, it's probably like the new in product on the market in the sort of like resin art craft world and it's basically an acrylic resin so it's kind of similar to an epoxy resin but then kind of not. Um, but is becoming more and more popular and so in this tutorial today I'm going to show you how you can create that swirl effect and I'm going to show you two different techniques and you can use these two different techniques whether you're using any brand of acrylic resin um, so whether you're using jessamite or the barns or the colorberry one or the resinite there's so many brands now coming out that are all selling acrylic resin and these two two techniques can be transferred through all of those different brands. The first step that you're gonna to need to do is measure out your powder and liquid for your acrylic resin. So today I'm using the brand Jessamite, but there are lots of acrylic resins out there on the market that you can use. So you just wanna do the correct measurements for the type of acrylic resin that you're using. For the mold that I'm using today, I'm gonna to need about 300 mils in total. So I've got my powder that I've measured out and I've just mixed in a little bit of Langridge Titanium white pigment powder and the reason why I'm doing this is because it's going to give my jessamite a white base. It might look like it's already got a white base but it actually sets as an off-white so if you want like a pure white base you do need to mix in a bit of titanium white powder or the jessamite white liquid just to make sure you get that real pure titanium white instead of that off-white that the jessamite naturally sets at. Then I'm just mixing in my liquid into my powder. So this does take a good amount of mixing to get rid of all of those powder clumps from the liquid. I like to add just a little, mix it up, add a bit more until eventually I get it up to a really nice smooth consistency. Then I've just got some blue pigment that I'm mixing through. This is from the Jessamite brand. For the first swirl technique, you do need to use a liquid dye. You can't use a powder because you're not going to be able to just drop it on the surface and then have it blend in. For the second technique, I'm going to show you how you can use powder colors. But for this first one, you do really need to have a liquid dye. And then all we're doing is just dropping it on top of the surface of our jessamite, giving it a slight swirl and then pouring it. And then as we pour it, you can see we get those beautiful swirl patterns coming through. If you need to, you can always add a few more as you pour it out because all the color is sitting on top, you will need to add a little bit more as you go, otherwise you'll end up with just white. With my swirl, I'm just pouring them into little puddle areas, so that way I can get like really swirly circles. If you wanted to, you can move it across your tray. It's up to you with how you pour your swirl out. I left my piece to set for a few hours before I do demold it. You can demold it sooner within that 20 minute time frame from when you first pour it, but you just have to be careful because sometimes you can break your piece when you are pulling it out if you pull it out when it's too still soft. I really like this effect. You get a really beautiful swirl and it's kind of like a really soft marbling. You could also do this same technique using multiple colors, so dropping different colors with your liquid dyes. I really think this has turned out really beautiful and this is what it looks like from behind. So that's the top part where we are pouring. 
For our second swirl technique, we're going to start off the exact same as we did on the first one, mixing our titanium white into our powder. Uh, the reason why I am mixing the titanium white into the powder first and then mixing the liquid is because it's a powder into a powder, it's just going to blend a lot easier. But if you have liquid dyes, you can then always add it in to the jessamite once it's in its liquid stage. But because I need a base white, that's why I've mixed it in to my full 300 um, mils amount of my jessamite. And then I'm going to divide that up into three colors. So I'm gonna leave one part as just white, and then I'm going to do two other colors. I'm using the blue again, which is the blue dye, and that's the jessamite blue liquid dye. And then I'm also going to be using a purpley pink shimmer powder this is just a mica the same micas that you would use in your epoxy resin and I'm just going to divide up my jessamite mixture in to the two other colors it doesn't matter that I've already got the titanium white in the full amount of mixture because it's just going to make these colors really vibrant and bright having that base white to it and then I'm just gonna mix these in together. So with your jessamite, I found that micas work great as well as the jessamite liquid tints. You want to make sure that you really mix these up well, especially when you are using micas going into the jessamite mixture, just because sometimes they can get a bit clumpy if you haven't mixed them up properly. Then I'm just going to pour my colors on top. So I'm just doing basically a dirty pour, what you would do with resin. So I'm pouring my pink and my blue over the top of my white, and I'm just using the same cup that the white was in originally. You could get a brand new cup and pour them layering them all together but I'm just going to be using the first cup. Once I'm happy with my sort of first layer I'm going to then start pouring out into my tray And there's no particular rhyme or reason with how I'm pouring this. I'm kind of just swirling it around and doing certain areas at a time. Then if you feel like it, you can add more if you're finding that the white is starting to come up because obviously all of our white is on the bottom of our cup that we do need to add more in layers. When you are happy with your pour and you've used up your full amount of jessamite resin filling up your mold, then you just need to tap your mold. This will help get any air bubbles up to the top of the surface and just make sure that your product has fully gone into every area of your mold. Then once again, I have just let it to set for a few hours before demolding it. And I really love this one. It, it's kind of a bit psychedelic because of all the swells and the vivid colors that I've used. Obviously, you can use whatever colors you like. You can definitely go for more muted tones, but I've just got such beautiful swirls the whole way through. And I think out of both techniques, I feel like this one is my favorite just because you get such bold swirls through it. It's not as marbled, it's very vivid, but I do like both techniques. Now, just to protect my pieces, I'm going to be giving them a varnish or a clear gloss coat. I'm using a matte spray today just because I like the matte finish of these jessamite pieces and I don't want to lose it. But if you want, you can always use a gloss spray or any type of acrylic varnish. This is just to protect the pieces and also make them a little bit water resistant. So it does depend on like what you're going to be using your jessamite pieces for, but it's always important to protect them. I hope you guys enjoyed this acrylic resin slash jessamite uh, technique tutorial. If you want more technique tutorials with this new product, I'm happy to do that. I've been working a lot with it. Um, so I'm definitely going to be doing a beginner's guide on it and also a lot more information um, talking more about it, what you can do and what you can't do. But if you want some more technique videos, different um, 
sort of styles that you can make, I'm definitely happy to do that. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment box below. If you got some information out of this video and you found it helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. That really helps my channel out. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post all sorts of arts and crafts videos to do with resin, jessamite, acrylic resin, alcohol, inks, candle making, every, everything along those lines. So thank you guys so much for watching.